Hello, I'm Ian. I am a, a volunteer at the observatory here and today I'm standing in Dome B at the observatory which is the YAP dome and the YAP reflector. Um, this is actually the biggest telescope uh, here at this site and in fact it was the biggest telescope that was in use when it was at the Royal Greenwich Observatory in Greenwich. So when this was actually built in 1932, uh, the cost of the entire dome and the telescope together was only £15,000, which you think an average London house uh, at the time was £1,000 uh, is quite a lot of money. Hard to believe, isn't it? Um, it weighs the whole thing about as much as a bus uh, and was installed in, here in sections, lowered by a crane through the roof. And the power of this telescope is phenomenal. It can actually capture 30,000 times more light than the human eye unaided. And this telescope was, for much of its time, was the most important and biggest telescope of the Royal Greenwich Observatory. So this is a reflecting telescope, so it uses the mirror. And the mirror in this case is 36 inches in diameter. Um, and it's 15 centimetres or six inches thick so imagine the weight of that mirror. Now, all the telescopes uh, are this part of the observatory in the main building are all reflecting telescopes. And they're all in the one building because that's where the machinery was for resilvering the mirror, or as, as it was in the day, aluminizing the mirror. So there's a trap door here. And when the mirror became a little bit faded and it, the, the surface had started to uh, degrade, they would winch the mirror through the floor down into um, a room below, a laboratory below, and put it into a and an aluminizing um, machine, which would actually works in a vacuum. And when the aluminum is inside it, it actually spreads out across the mirror's surface and gives it this highly reflective coating. Now, this is what they call a Cassegrain focus reflecting telescope. The light comes through the cage, uh, cage-like tube there from the star and comes all the way down the tube and then reflects back up to the other mirror you see in the centre. And after the light is reflected in the secondary mirror in the centre of the cage, uh, the beam goes back down here and arrives at the eyepiece at the end. Um, and when this was actually a working telescope, there would also be a spect uh, spectroscope attached to, a spectrograph I should say, attached to the end of the telescope. Um, and what a spectrograph does is splits the light from a star into its component colours. And the magic of a spectrograph is that it tells you huge amounts of data about the star that you wouldn't get just from looking through an eyepiece and looking at it visually. So what it does, it breaks the light down into its colours, which will tell you things like how hot the star is, it'll tell you um, how, how the star's moving, whether it's moving away from you or towards you. So the spectrograph was really important to some very important discoveries here at the observatory. And the most important one of those was the discovery in uh, 1972 of the optical uh, stellar mass black hole by Louise Webster and Paul Murdin. Now, this telescope was used to actually test the equipment that made that discovery. So what Paul and Louise did is they found that there was a, a star in the constellation of Cygnus that was moving in a very odd way. And they did that from using the spectrograph uh, data. So they knew that it was moving towards and away from the star in a particular kind of way, which meant that there was another very massive object in orbit with it. And it was discovered su subsequently that that very heavy object was in fact the first stellar mass black hole ever to be discovered. And it was largely discovered here by Paul Murden and Louis Webster in 1972. So like all the telescopes on this site, um, this telescope was built by Grubb and Parsons, um, who were the kind of premier telescope makers of the day back in Victorian and early 20th century eras. So um, this is a, an F-15 Cascarain reflector. It's got a focal length of uh, 4.57 meters. And as I say, it is one of the premier telescopes of the day. You'll notice that it's painted a uniform gray, more or less. And that's true of all the other telescopes, because they all, at the time this was the Royal Greenwich Observatory, um, 
everything was basically owned by the Admiralty. So the Admiralty was the uh, was the organisation that owned these telescopes and the observatory. And they painted all the telescopes in the paint that they used for their warships. So if you think that these look a little bit like uh, naval artillery, that's probably why. One of the most important roles of this telescope was as a test bed for uh, equipment, uh, instruments that actually were fitted onto the 98-inch Isaac Newton telescope, which at the time was the largest telescope in Europe. And that was actually here on this site as well. So those of you who know the area will see a big dome over the trees just to the south of the equatorial group here. And that was the dome where the 98-inch Isaac Newton telescope resided. And it was there from 1967. And much of the equipment that it used, more the instruments to actually measure the light from stars, were actually tested, first of all, on this, the YAP reflector. Very sadly, the, uh, the old dome for the Isaac Newton telescopes were now empty. Um, and the telescope was moved to La Palma in the Canary Islands in 1979. Um, you can see why they did that. Um, to be honest, a place like this in the middle of Sussex at a time when astronomers were able to move, uh, travel very cheaply to places that had clearer skies, it just became less economically viable to have it here. So it just made sense to move it somewhere like the Canaries where they were more sure of getting clear skies and dry air. So this dome, Dome B, with the YAP reflector, is open for whenever you visit the uh, observatory. Uh, but something that sadly we can't do is open it and use it for viewing. Um, it's the one telescope, really, that we can't do that with. However, we do use the, the dome as a wonderful backdrop to a number of events we do here, from musical events through to astronomy classes. You name it, it's probably happened at some point. In Dome B. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the dome and uh, we hope to see you very soon at the Observatory Science Centre.